Welcome back to Draymond Does Gaming. Draymond here playing more Baldur's Gate 3. Um, took a little bit of break here because patch 7 came out. And I wasn't sure if it was going to add anything, break anything, etc. to the run. So I just kind of waited, let it patch, see if there's any issues and stuff. And yeah, we're going to continue on. Um, we have a booze tub here that I want to check out too. Um, I think I remember this from previous run as well. And I think it's going to be quite entertaining to use. So we're going to go do that. We're going to do that and then we'll probably head on in. Because we need to, we need to do both things. Hey, you try to slip us something! As the symbol glows, power courses through you. No, oh, is he not supposed to be watching me while I do it? Just a drop of fire wine, it'll give a the brew a real kick. Hey, cat. Sorry. This cat just wants to be a pain when we're uh, when I'm trying to record. Oh, jeez. All right. Well, we're on a on a good spot this time. Okay. I just have. As the symbol glows, oh. power courses through you. Authority. Okay. So they just need to move out of the way. Why are you guys, like, jumping around? Um. Did these people break? Um. Okay. If we get, like, out of that way, maybe they'll leave. Oh, there he goes. Now we can. Yeah, yeah. And let's do... I don't know, Wyvern Dachshund. Don't actually drink it. I'm um, glad you asked. Tell everyone to gather around. It's your party celebrate it. Guys, this one's giving us a toast. You raise your glass and shout. To me, to the absolute, to drinking till we die. May I bet each and every one of you before this? Oh dear god, no. These are great options. Um, to drinking till we die? That seems pretty good for goblins. Uh, bard performance. I mean, obviously we'll show off an elaborate bartending trick. Which requires only a two or higher on our roll. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta love being a bard. This is fantastic. Bravo! Now get out of my way. I need another drink. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, well, you poisoned us. Maybe as the symbol glow. 
Um, alright. I guess she just decided she wanted to cut out. <laughs> okay, there are, there's a few buggy things. <laughs> so, we'll see. If, if I'd poisoned you, do you think I'd still be here? I did, and I'd slit your throat if you prefer a... Hmm... Well, we would fight a lot less right now. Yeah, we'll go with that. I'm not going to spend anything on it, so... Should have passed Guidance at the very least, apparently. Um, I want to keep my inspiration. Or you just thought we'd be stupid enough to believe you. Why is the audio cutting out? Okay. Well, that's no good. Is Gale not in combat? He is not. I mean, I guess we gr just grease all of that. There we go. <laughs> so good okay um we do have this guy coming so Where do I go from here? what we could do is we could summon we could do something that i don't generally ever do we could sound lumps war horn to come help us out here. But I don't know if we actually need it or not. So I think what we'll just do is shoot a fire arrow um, into this grease. Because that seems like fun. Um, arrows. Shooting fire Um, sure, we'll react and make it a hit and do something nice and easy. I imagine this guy actually can't reach us. Maybe we just go up here. Um, yeah, where are, that's these guys over here, one, one, two, three, four, and him. Okay. I'm okay with ending my turn like that. Rude. Okay. Well, I think we just charge this one then. With Carlac. Bye -bye. That seems pretty good to me. Yeah, hit him for 15. Not too shabby. Um. Yeah, I. He's so far away, so he has to get closer. Let's just come over here, just kind of be in the way to, for them to get to Gale. That guy's going to probably burn. It's this one here, Krola, that we're going to have to kind of deal with. 50, 50. Okay. One damage. Not quite what I was looking for. Yeah, he's got a dash to get close. And he's going to go for that one, which is fine. Ish. Right, these guys are dead over here, aren't they? Okay, I think we retreat back Gale just so he's not... 
right there. Yeah. Uh, sorry, just a coming call there, but I'm not going to answer because I don't recognize that number. It's an odd number. I'm going to go with probable telemarketer or something to that effect. 75% chance to uh, vicious mockery this guy. Nice. Seems pretty good. Um, what next? What else can we do? I feel like some of the sound effects and things are not working right now. I don't overly like that. I think that's it. I don't think we need to do anything else. You hit me, I hit you. How much damage does that do? 1d4. Yeah, it's not quite worth it. Okay. Well, I think we go for the hit here, because this guy needs to die. Uh, so an 11 doesn't help either way. But true strike. Okay, we'll take that. Um... You want to heal yourself right now? Five. I think we can heal you. There we go. See this ability. I think if we do this, then he's kind of stuck on Shadow Heart. Oh, come on. Just to get out of the way. Yeah, this could hurt. Cutting words. They rolled a 22. How about just that portent so that it misses? Outright. That guy burns. Nice. There we go. Vicious Mockery's on. Because that's what matters. Alright. This guy's going next. But this guy hits harder. So I'd like to just outright get him. And then move a bit closer. We have the advantage. We hit in. Really don't want him moving around. There we go, that's better. Then we can move slightly closer. Nice. Good miss. <laughs> I love using that reaction there. Oh, he saved it this time. That's not good. And let's get behind. Actually, maybe like that, just so that we're not in range of this, like, slam. Okay. What do we hit here? Maybe to kill? Three to eight, because it's one, one d6 plus two. Oh, that's only a, like a 50% chance to actually kill, so I'd rather keep hitting this guy. Keep him stuck. Nice. And he fell. Perfect. Even better. Um, yeah. 
We'll do that so he has vicious mockery on him. I think that's worth it. This is gonna feel good. Goodbye. There we go. Advantage because of the prone. Um, I don't. Well, okay. No, no penalty for attacking prone with range. Interesting, because that is a mechanic in D and D. Ranged attacks still take. Uh... Oh yeah. There we go. Nice. Well, now I think we just go for the kill here. There we go. Moving ahead. That's pretty good. Come on, people, let's get down. No? Oh my god. What is going on with all this? Well, might as well loot everything while we're here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. More for me. Okay, that's also not where I thought we'd be going. I guess I am tiny. What is going on with this, like, ladder stuff? Hmm. What? Is there just, like, issues going on with the game? Not, not happy about this. Well, we're gonna grab all this stuff, obviously. And then we'll give it all to, um, what's her name? Carlac here. Oh, wrong button. I is for inventory. Okay, parchment, read. A doodle of a goblin. Okay. Interesting. Dwarf, oh wait, no, those are the ones we saw the last time, that's why. It's like, a I thought we read these. Missives of Candle Keep. So this actually is kind of neat because this ties into the original. Um, Candle Keep is where the uh, Baldur's Gate 1 hero protagonist is from. Uh, Gorion. Um, and I wouldn't say that any of this is spoilers because Gorion, you find... It's all within like the intro. <laughs> so... Um, Gorion is his, um, father or stepfather or adopted father, etc. Something along those lines. So, over the past year I've, and this is funny because he's, uh, addressing this to Elminster. Elminster, that is a character in Faerun. Um, quite possibly the most powerful mage in all the realms basically godlike level so the fact that he's um talking to him or sending him something that's interesting uh to the sage elminster over the past year i've delivered many of your letters to master Gorion, so i wanted to be the one to deliver the sad news alas he isn't with us no more Gorion and his ward so this is okay well you're gonna get some spoilers here for Baldur's gate one even though this happens within the first, like, the introduction um, chapter of the game. Um, so if you don't want to know about any of this, don't read this and don't listen to this right now for the next, until this this screen is off your page. So, 
Grind and his ward left Candlekeep soon after your last letter to him arrived. They departed in the middle of the night, but were waylaid. <laughs> oh man, the waylaid. You've been waylaid by enemies. Um, shortly after on the road to Bear Ghost. The gate warden tells me that Grind saw to it that several of his attackers joined him in the next world before he was struck down. I hope this means this brings you the same grim comfort it brings me. Of his ward, there was no sign, and some better news. I received your letter to the library and was able to find much of the material request has been successfully uh, secured and will travel with this letter. Tristan Shale, librarian at Candlekeep. He's a very interesting character as well in, in that. Uh, P.S. I hope you'll forgive my curiosity, but I might ask, why do you need so much information about Ball Spawn? What exactly are you working on? So, um, before I close this, because working into spoilers and things, so people are interested in knowing more about this, uh, stay here. If not, skip forward a little. Um, Gorion's Ward, who's the protagonist in Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, is a ball spawn, a spawn of the god ball. Um, we're going to learn more about this later on in this, but it's very interesting um, to know about that. And there's one reason why, um, if I play this again, I'll be playing as um, one of the other characters, etc., versus a custom character. So we'll check that out the next time I decide to play through. Okay. Um, all this stuff, holy moly. That's just plus two, so it's not even, like, anything good. Tongs. Uh, but that, that was a very neat, um, we're gonna add all that to wares, just so that we know. Give to Carlac. We're still encumbered. Um, Carlac. Oh, I missed the shields is why. There we go. No longer encumbered. Okay. Looks like we did all of that stuff. Well, now we have some time to go and um, pick up all the stuff. Roasted war flags. Yum. Best skin anthology of goblin poetry. Sharp eye, Aggie. Nice. Uh, and we're immediately encumbered. What's a hand drum? That's cool. Actually, what I should be doing is probably picking all this stuff up with Carlac. Ooh, hide armor plus one, revify, very nice. Poison arrows. Yoink. <laughs> Agreed, yoink. I'm at it. Hello. Grab all this stuff too. Scimitars. Okay. Nice. Let's go check what's in here as well. Okay. Um, I keep hitting that button, rather. Hide armor plus two. I mean, that is very nice. It's just unfortunate that no one really wears it. Crude mace. Funny. Um, that wears. Yeah, we're going to send all of this to camp. Free up like 40 something pounds. Ooh. Great Axe, send to Carlac, and then um, we'll actually send all this stuff to camp as well, just free up some of that space. Come back to Carlac here. 
So 5 to 16. It's actually worse than the Sword of Justice right now, but great axes are fantastic. So, okay. All right. What now? Best be on my way. So, we might as well come over here, check all this stuff out then. Looks empty. Looks empty. Um, so... Now we're now we're just in loot goblin mode, which is fantastic, because I I do love looting everything that we possibly can, um, making whatever scraps of cash we can. Um, Something good here. I know we've already like been up here and stuff. Do I do I care too much about what's in some of that stuff? Not really, so I won't worry about going back up there. But all this stuff, yeah, I mean, there's so much booze and things down here that we can grab. We might as well. Um, and then if we come up here, there were people up here too. Did they die as well, or are they still sleeping? Are you guys going to join us? What is the case with these ladders? Okay, so there's they're actually still all sleeping up here. Shabby workmanship. Strong push and this wall comes down. Mhm. Mm Agreed. Oh. My head <laughs> killing me. Oh. What is all that noise? As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Um Hush now, go back to sleep. Yeah, no. Just we'll just straight up attack them. Oh, come on. These guys weren't awake over there. What is this nonsense? I don't like that. And they beat us on initiative. No, oh, that's just not fair. That's just not fair. Alcohol. Okay. Well. I think we aim it there and try to blow all that stuff up. Seems pretty good. And then we drop back. Um, we'll come up around this side so we can hit this guy. Nice. Oh, he greased us. Okay, we saved on the grease. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, we'll just hit this one. I'd like to just get off the grease. Nice. And they're just throwing rocks at us. Stop that. Ow. Okay. Um... Yeah, I think we just do this. We can take him out, or we can start working on these guys. I think we start working on this this guy back here. Not too... 
Oh, ow. Alright, that actually hit me for more than I thought it would. Okay. Perfect. Drunk sleeping? Are we still on, like... Uh, passes. No, we're not on unconscious. Did he just fall asleep? That's funny. Um... Yeah, let's get around over here then. And stab that guy. Let's try to work on him now. Shoved him. Ooh, missile snaring. I'm, you know, I'm at like full health, so I don't think that really matters to me too much. Uh, we will warcaster him though. Oh man, too bad. Oh yeah, they're falling asleep. That's hilarious. Nice. There we go. Fuck yes. We could outright kill him. Nice. Nice. Huge miss. Sixty-five. Um, yeah, I think we just go for the kill. That's pretty good, if you ask me. Carlax at not very much. I'd like to get up on this guy's face. Oh, we missed, but we're up in his face. Good. He has to disengage and get back. That's fine. Okay. Let's cut your fire, baby. Oh yeah. No surrender. There we go. The last board is set. Um yeah, we are gonna jump over the grease. Oh, we missed. We, yeah, we have advantage. Let's just get up there and crit him in the face. That's fantastic. Um, fortunately, we can't get very far. We reach you. No, we can't. All right. Crit. <laughs> fantastic. All right. find a way forward. That's fantastic. We're gonna need to do a rest, though, aren't we? I'd rather do that than uh. Let's get the autumn crocus. Oh, they were throwing javelins at us that looked more like rocks. Uh, Azith and other gods. Interesting. Any other... No. Well, mind you, we could probably take their stuff. Oh, they don't have any more stuff. Okay. Well, while we're here... Um... Staves, hand drums, hats, rags. Let's add all of that to where? It's actually, that stuff too. We'll just send those to camp. Actually, get rid of those and give that to Carlac. We're gonna do our short rest here. We've got. 
I mean, technically we have three, so... Okay, and then you have a blunt weapon, right? I thought you did. That's slashing. Piercing. I want bludgeoning. You can't tell me that a morning star doesn't also do bludgeoning. I would rule it that way. So, sturdy means what? We have to do at least 10 damage to it. It's piercing resistance. We could piercing it. Okay. Um, no one else has like a giant piercing weapon 1d8 okay Carlac just wield that for right now What's the story? Down the hatch. really Five to twelve. Come on. Alright, I actually don't think that's gonna work. Hmm. Give that back to Shadow Heart. Um. Okay. I thought I'd try. Okay. Looking like we're not going to get through there. All's well that ends. No, not as bad as it could okay. Can't slow down. Well, let's come back over here because the person that was up here before, well, is no more. Magic of the Weave, an introduction. Perfect. There's a heavy chest over there. Um, Carlac. Okay, we should actually toggle group mode so that you guys don't all do this. What next? Yeah. Up. Oh, there's a just a dude down there. Got it. Oh. Okay. Some cracked eggs. Nice. Ooh, gold, fire, amber, viridian, crystal. Done. Silver plate. There's also a wooden chest up there. Can she jump to over there? Not quite. Hmm. How do we so probably from there to there. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, let's go to group mode this way. We'll actually come all the way over here because I didn't see all that stuff before. Everyone actually following? Hey, toggle group mode. She can't.
can make it nice. Wait, what? Potion of healing. Heck yeah. Nice. Makeshift spear. Don't need. But the wooden chest. Arrow of dragon slaying. Well, isn't that convenient for all the dragons to be slain? Which admittedly isn't that many. But arrow of salving, cure your target of poison paralysis or blindness. Neat. Okay, I don't know if I've ever been up here before. That's cool. Definitely don't need a makeshift spear, so... Okay, let's go back to you. Group mode, and we'll come back down here. Now, we should probably heal Karlak once more. How many, um... This is class... How many spells do we have? One more level one. Okay. Well, I think we cure Karlac. Huge. Let's get going. Huge. Very well. Okay. Lost in thought. Let's guidance us and we'll head in. Really, Gale? My condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. Okay. And soon. Have one more. Um. Uh, guidance. Gloves of heroism. Don't have a paladin. You know what, you could probably have this, because he couldn't even wear that, or use that. Thank you. Hey. And I don't think it was worth that much. Good gods. It hardly has any effect. Mr. Have mercy on us all. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. Um. Go on. Might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. It's not really the place for it right now, Gail. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy from an early age could not only control the weave but compose it much like a musician or a poet such was my skill that it so, earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself the lady of mysteries the goddess Mistra. Mm -hmm. she revealed herself to me and she became my teacher in time she became my muse and later even my lover so much fun interesting You telling me that you made love to a goddess? We enjoyed each other's company, body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. Uh huh. You thought you knew better than Mister. <laughs> You're more than a fool than I thought. How exactly did you try to cross those boundaries? Let's go, guy. I pouted, I pleaded, 
swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. Inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess. Yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Uh, yeah, I'm intrigued. Tell me all. Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. He almost managed, but not quite. His entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured and shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms. Until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought. Until... In the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? Oh, man. So, there's quite a few things to do with that one. Um, and it's actually funny, because I think he's referencing the, um, fourth edition? When the spell plague happened, basically what had happened is, uh, um, Maestra died, and then got resurrected in fifth edition, and came back and undid all the spell plague. Um, so that's cool. Um... What if after all this time I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? Um, Bloody racket. Oh, come on now. <laughs> just a bit of fun. Oh, I guess he ruled out flowers and chocolates altogether, you know then. My gestures can never be grand oh, enough. Oh, I'm certain well this deed of raw power, you. draped in romance, would convince oh, Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domain. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next, here, place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound so much fun. and suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through you and becomes part of you. Oh the gods, is it ever hungry? Oh man, how are you still Thankfully, alive? The moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. Bloody racket! This oh, netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better so word, is balled up inside my Those chest. But it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. Go on. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry 
and it'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. <sighs> Let's see. Is there nothing we can do? Chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner. We might cross paths with a miracle round the bend. Then again, we might not. All of this. It must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. Okay. If having dangerous otherworldly objects stuck in your skin is wrong. Then Gail and I both have to go. We're not really splitting up, are we? We come this far together and we'll continue on together. This is how it will be. That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. Yes, yeah, stand no. at a precipice. But if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now, even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. I do wish that there weren't these goblins right here talking through all that. Um, but yeah, so I'm pretty sure the event he's talking about is the end of 3rd edition and the start of 4th edition D&D. Because at the end of 3rd edition is when, um, like that timeline, 1372DR, um, is when Maestra died, exploded, etc. And then the spell plague happened, things crashed, tore apart all of Faerun, um, Really cool event. A lot of people didn't like it, um, but they don't really care. <laughs> Fourth edition was great. I can't change my mind on that. Um, and then, in when Fourth edition started, it was like fourteen seventy dr or something like that, like a hundred years after, and that's when Maestra returned. Um, I believe that's when she returned. Or a different goddess of magic came forth, etc. Um, and then with 5th edition, which is set even later in time, um, it basically retroactively got rid of the Spell Plague event because people were... didn't like the... Uh, didn't like that change. And... I don't un overly understand why, because, um, yeah, so it's set in 1490 to basically reset the timeline and make it all back to what it was, and it's like, well, how do you progress your story rather than go, I'd rather see it progress, a progression rather than, uh, going backwards, right? Which is what happened. But hey, besides that. Um, we are here. That cutscene took way longer than I thought. I wasn't expecting to do that at this exact moment. Um, so I do need to actually stop here. Um, but we got some combat in, so that was great. What we are going to be doing here is we have like, we have so many quests in here. Steal the Sacred Idol. Uh, rescue, we have to rescue Volo. Escalon Priestess for help. Find Night Song. Rescue the Druid, that's all in here. Also, Zaza is here. Um, so we're going to deal with all that next time. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Um, yeah, I... I was hoping there would be some other stuff happening with um, Patch 7 that we could do, but unfortunately there really isn't. And it, it did seem a little bit buggy in that last section, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, <laughs> again... One reason why I don't like one one save runs or things like that, because uh, if you encounter, you know, hey, we just patched this and oh, look at that, your save gets corrupted or you can't do anything because there's a bug um, while well, you just ruin that entire playthrough. So, yeah, we'll we'll see about that and see where where it takes us from there. But thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.